Hello and welcome to the Starting Mech series, the series where we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Adeptus Mechanicus forces. It's been a little while since I made one of these videos, unfortunately sometimes life can get a little strange and it's kept me away from making content for longer than I would have liked. However, luckily now I'm back and hopefully I can continue making content on a regular weekly basis like I used to. Anyway, getting to the content itself, in this video I thought we would jump ahead and take a look at various 2000 point army lists for the Adeptus Mechanicus that have been performing rather well in tournaments, as there have been quite a few interesting developments since the errata came out in the most recent FAQ. To begin with, let's look at the first list that I thought was rather interesting, and this list was piloted by a player named Manny Chima, and he placed first in a 32 player event known as the Twisted Onslaught. To begin with, this list starts out with a patrol detachment of the Lucius Forge World. The HQ for this detachment is a Manipulus, who is the warlord for the army, and he has no upgrades outside from his Relic, Trait, and Holy Order. For the trait, he has gone with Luminescent Blessing, and for the Relic, they've gone with the Solar Flare. For the Holy Order, they've gone with the Low Guy. All of this is rather standard for a Lucius Warlord, and it increases the resilience of an army rather significantly. This makes it rather clear that what made Lucius good before is still very relevant within the meta. Moving on, the list incorporates three squads of 20 rangers. There are a few interesting things about these rangers, the first one being that all of the squads are equipped with two plasma calibers. This isn't something that I expected to see, but considering the low cost of the plasma calibers and the potential potency that they have, as well as a little bit of a reduction of some of the stratagems and other abilities that made the galvanic rifles and the radium carbines good, it does make sense that we're seeing a little bit more special weapons within the armies. It's great to see that they still have a place within the game and they haven't completely been sidelined by the rather powerful generic weapons that the rangers and vanguard come with. In addition, all of the squads are armed with data tethers and are armed with omnispexes for obvious reasons as they are rather large squads and it's good for them to have access to various special traits that the Skitari can take. Speaking of those traits, one of the squads is armed with a multitasking cortex allowing them to perform actions while still firing at the enemy which is a rather important trait to have for large squads if you're planning to take objectives that require you to perform different actions or if you know you're going into a tournament that has various actions that need to be performed. In addition to the multitasking cortex, one of the squads has a firepoint telemetry cache, which gives them a little bit more resilience, and this is good because it does help out large squads once again go that extra mile. Don't forget that even though things like the galvanic volley and the enriched round stratagems were nerfed, there's still perfectly fine stratagems that can see a lot of use with large squads such as these. And as you can see within this list, the large squads of Skitari have not gone away, and they are still very prevalent in many different lists. Following the three troop choices of this patrol detachment, the player has chosen to take two flyers. The first of these flyers being a fuselave with an uplink, and the second flyer being a stratoraptor with a chaff launcher. This is a rather reasonable inclusion, as the flyers have been taking a more primary role within different admech armies, after the various changes to the admech weapons platforms. That being said, that concludes the first patrol of this army list. Very interesting choices, but nothing out of the norm so far. To proceed forward, the list includes a second patrol detachment, which is once again composed of the Lucius Forge World. Unlike the first attachment, the second attachment has a Skitari Marshal for its HQ choice, taking an extra trait and an extra relic. The trait being Programmed Retreat, which allows a squad to fall back and still fire within the same turn, and the relic being Exemplus Eternity, which helps the firepower of a squad. For the troop choice of the second patrol detachment, the player has chosen to go with one troop choice, being a unit of 17 rangers. The interesting thing about this unit is that it does not have an enhanced data tether, however it does have an omnispecs and includes one plasma caliber. We can see the plasma caliber is not a point soak within this list, but is rather a very conscious inclusion as it is prevalent across all of these squads. It'd be interesting to see why exactly the plasma caliber over the arc rifle. Maybe it has to do with the firepower difference between the two different weapons, though I do think one interesting thing to note is that the arc rifle would benefit from the manipulus buff, whereas the plasma caliber does not. Continuing on with our second patrol detachment, this patrol detachment includes two more flyers, both of them being fuselaves with the uplink instead of the chaff launcher. We have now four flyers within this list, though that is not where this list concludes as there is yet another patrol detachment. The third patrol detachment is composed of the Mars Forge World. This third patrol detachment once again has an HQ choice of a Skitari Marshal and he has an X Relic. This extra relic being the Raiment of the Technomartyr. And the Raiment of the Technomartyr is a reasonable buff to the shooting capabilities of units in various circumstances, as well as being a decent survivability buff to the bearer of this relic. And then, proceeding there, the troop choice is once again a unit 
of 17 Rangers with one Plasma Caliber and an Omni Specs, similar to that of the Second Patrol Detachment. So far rather copy and paste, and there's no exception to that with the final choices of this Patrol Detachment being two more flyers. In this case, instead of Fusilaves, which have now been maxed out due to the rule of three, they have taken two Stratoraptors and have given each of the Stratoraptors Chaff Launchers. And with that, the list is concluded. As you can see, this is a very interesting list and uses a very small selection of units to be very effective on the battlefield. The Skitari forces are taken in large numbers within their unit sizes and are armed with special weapons to give them that little bit of extra mid-range firepower, and the flyers do their own thing while the Skitari take over the field as a whole. As we all know, the Fusilave is an incredibly powerful unit that has a very good ability to generate quite a lot of mortal wounds. That being said, there's something to be noted about the Chaff Launchers all being on the Stratoraptor and not on the Fusilaves. The reason for this being that this list really doesn't have any heavy firepower outside of those Stratoraptors. So if this army engaged a heavily armored list and their Stratoraptors were taken out, they would find it rather hard to take out those armored targets. As such, the Chaff Launchers were spent on the Stratoraptors, whereas if the Fusilaves are taken out, it's much less of a blow to the list thanks to those Plasma Calibers and the Galvanic Rifle Fire that the Skitari forces bring to the table. More so, having those uplinks gives them the ability to use some of the stratagems that they otherwise wouldn't be able to use without having any uplinks. And in addition to that, it could divert some firepower to the fusilaves that would otherwise go to the Stratoraptors if all six flyers had chaff launchers equipped. This is a very minor perk and most good players would be able to see around this, though it may affect how players choose to prioritize their targeting in some cases. In any case, it's interesting to see that the 6 flyer list that was postulated as being potentially the best list has taken a first place finish, and while it didn't include any Iron Striders, it did make heavy use of very large squads of Skitari, meaning that that strategy is still very much in play. Additionally, it's easy to say that Lucius is still very much one of the strongest Forge Worlds, though there is more competition to it now after the changes that were made within the last FAQ. And in addition to that, we are seeing more mixed lists where you will see different detachments of different Forge Worlds, such as in this case where there are two Lucius Patrol Detachments and a Mars Patrol Detachment. Though do keep in mind that taking so many detachments in order to include all of the flyers does create a situation in where you'll be extremely command point hungry in an army that is already command point hungry due to all the additional relics and traits that it wishes to take. As you can see, this list has taken quite a few of those. In any case, this was definitely an interesting list, though it's definitely one of the more simple lists that we'll be seeing within this video. As I like to showcase a variety of different lists that give people different ideas of how you can play the Depus Mechanicus forces in different ways and I like to explore different ideas. Now that we've taken a look at our first list, let's move on to our second list, which was played by a player named Dan Savage within the Normal Blokes GT, and he placed fourth within that event, which had 47 players. Right off the bat, the list starts with something interesting, bringing a single brigade detachment composed of the Metallica Forge World. In addition to that, it utilizes the Skitari Veteran Cohort, which is the new army of renown from the Book of Fire within the Warzone Caradon campaigns. To begin with, as this is a brigade detachment, they are required to take multiple HQ choices. The first of these HQ choices being a Manipulus, which has the Magna Rail Lance, and only has an upgrade of a Holy Order being Logi. So rather mild start to what's otherwise a very interesting list. Though it does show you how good the Manipulus is in itself, as the Manipulus does not really need any additional buffs outside of having a Holy Order trait. After the Manipulus, the second HQ choice is a Skitari Marshal, and the Skitari Marshal is the Warlord of the Army, taking a trait and a relic. The trait of the Skitari Marshal is to calculate without diversion, and the relic for this Skitari Marshal is the Cantic Thrallnet. Already we're seeing the impact of the Skitari Veteran Cohort with the trait and relic both being from that army of renown. The Cantic Thrallnet does give you quite a lot of additional benefits thanks to its usage of Doctrinas, which are already rather powerful in themselves. And while there have been some questions of whether or not the trait would be worthwhile, it does seem like this list has made good use of it in the situation as being able to reduce the command point cost of various stratagems within the army of renown is never bad to have, especially in a command point hungry army like the Adeptus Mechanicus. Following this HQ choice, the third HQ choice is the Skitari Marshal, which comes with an extra trait and an extra relic. The trait being Firepoint Telemetry Cache, which we've already covered in the first list, and the relic being the Metallican Lung. The Metallican Lung is a rather powerful relic that is unique to the Metallica Forge World, and is one of the better reasons to go into the Metallica Forge World to begin with, as it can be a rather powerful and devastating relic when debuffing enemy units with its ability. Following the HQ choices, this list is required to take a total of six troop choices, being a brigade detachment. To begin with, the list brings four units of five ranger veterans, which have then increased survivability and extra abilities thanks to being veterans from the army of renown, though their points to cost is increased, which limits their size and number to some extent. 
Following the four units of rangers, there are two units of five vanguard veterans, which once again benefit from that increased tier ability as well as having their own special abilities. And the shows of the vanguard are not completely out of the picture, though they do see play alongside rangers more often than seeing play as an individual unit in themselves as they used to see in the past. Where this list becomes a little more interesting is that the list brings a total of three dune riders as dedicated transports. My best assumption based on the rest of the list is that these three dune riders are being used to transport the six units of the different Skidari troops as well as the different HQ choices and some situations alongside the troop units as none of them have any data tethers. Now this is something we don't really see very often because dune riders have fallen out of favor due to the overall mobility that the admac have as a whole. Now speaking of that mobility we can look at the elite choices and in the elite choices the list includes two units of five Sicarian infiltrators being armed with power swords and stub carbines. A good choice in itself though there is always opportunity to take the taser goats and flechette blasters depending on what role you wish for those infiltrators to fulfill within your army list. I can definitely see both the taser goats and power swords being perfectly fine choices for the infiltrators and I've seen many lists running one or the other in some cases both as both are perfectly fine options. Following the infiltrators is a unit of five rust stalkers armed with transonic blades which is pretty much the only option for them considering the other option is rather subpar in comparison. The rust stalkers once again are a reasonably fast moving unit with a lot of tricks and the ability to be absolute blenders within close combat. One thing to note because of the small size of these units they have not been given any relics or traits as they are rather small and would not really benefit from them so while they can do a decent amount of damage within combat once they reach it they definitely seem that in this list they serve more of a function of being a mobility unit than they do a combat unit considering that we'll see that almost everything else within the list is taken in a much larger quantity than these units of infiltrators and rust stalkers. Moving on from the elite slot we come to the fast attack choice. The fast attack slot includes two units of seven Taraxi sterilizers which are a rather powerful unit and have been seeing quite a lot of play within the different admec forces. Following the Taraxi Sterilizers is a unit of 9 Cerberus Raiders and their alpha has been given an extra relic being the Skull of Elder Nikolai. The Skull of Elder Nikolai is an interesting inclusion as it does indicate that this player expected to see a rather vehicle heavy meta that he was going into. It's also interesting to note that this is one of the only instances that I've seen of a Raider Alpha being given a relic. Usually relics and traits are reserved for things like the Sicarians or large squads of Skitari if they are not given to the different HQ choices. That being said, I can definitely see why this was used in such a manner as the Raiders are a rather fast unit and being such a fast unit allows them to get within range of the Skull's ability rather quickly in comparison to all of the other choices. Though that being said, they are sometimes a little bit squishy and there might have been some justification of taking a larger unit of infiltrators and giving them that skull so that they can infiltrate close to a vehicle and run up to it in order to do their thing. Then again, the range on the raiders also helps them be next to an enemy vehicle while still making use of their firepower against other enemies nearby, whereas the range of the infiltrators is significantly more limited. So this is definitely an interesting use of the raiders and the ability to take a relic on a Skitari Alpha. Following the squad of raiders, there's a second squad of raiders composed of seven raiders total. There's nothing particularly special about this unit as they have no additional upgrades, though they're still perfectly fine and a large squad of raiders is a rather good choice to have. Finally, the list wraps up with its three heavy choices being three Scorpius disintegrators all armed with Belarus energy cannons. One thing to say about this list is it's good to see Metallica has finally made the top tables and it's good to see also that the Dune Rider and Scorpius Disintegrator are still very much in play. That being said, it's very obvious that this list relies on mobility as its primary factor and the Disintegrators particularly serve a role that anything that they can't get in range of, the Disintegrators can target due to their ability to avoid line of sight. However, one thing I will mention is that there are many similar lists to this, however, they did not include things like the Dune Rider. Rather, they chose to include Iron Striders and went heavier on the Infiltrators and Rust Stalkers, as well as having plenty of Sterilizers and Raiders within the list. As such, I think this might be one of the weaker ways to build this list, simply because you're expending a lot of points into the Dune Riders. However, if you like playing with Dune Riders and things like that, this is definitely a good list to try out and it's one that seems like a lot of fun to play, especially as it gives you a lot of variety as well as a lot of mobility. The third and final list that we'll look at within this video is the most interesting list, as I always like to save the most interesting list for last within these videos. This list plays second within a 52 player event known as the Hammer of Wrath and was played by a player named Jason McKenzie. This list begins with a battalion detachment composed of the Mars Forge World utilizing the Skitari Veteran Cohort Army of Renown Rules. And as within the previous list, the first HQ choice is a Manipulus. 
However, unlike the previous list, this Manipulus comes with a tiny bit more gear than the other Manipulus, being armed with a raiment of the Techno Martyr, in addition to having the Holy Order upgrade of the Logai. As you can see, pretty much across the board, the Holy Order of Logai is still the most powerful Holy Order and is still seeing plenty of play within different lists. Though the raiment of the Techno Martyr is definitely a nice inclusion for any unit that wants to function as a buff unit for other units. The second HQ choice is a Skatari Marshal being the warlord of the list, and once again, this Skatari Marshal includes the multitasking Cortex as well as the Cantic Thrallnet. Once again, we can see that these are rather powerful abilities from the veteran cohort and have proven themselves to be very popular within different Skatari veteran cohort army lists that we've seen across the board. And following the Skatari Marshal, there is a third HQ choice being a second Skatari Marshal, which once again carries an extra relic and an extra trait. The extra trait being a firepoint telemetry cache in order to help your units with some of their ability to survive shooting. Following that, the relic that this Skatari Marshal has is the Exemplar's Eternity, which is once again a rather powerful powerful relic that gives this guitar marshal the ability to help units reroll significantly better than his base abilities allow. As a whole, don't be surprised that you see the Exemplar's Attorney in pretty much any list that can make good use of it. And finally, there's one more HQ choice, being the Engine Seer, utilizing the Brotherhood of the Cog ability in order to not violate the HQ restrictions within a Battalion Detachment. This Engine Seer carries a Holy Order ability of the Magi, and this is the first Holy Order ability that we've seen within an army list that we've looked at that hasn't been the low guy. It's also interesting to see that an Engine Seer has been chosen in this situation, though the obvious reason is, is that the troop choices are a bit smaller than in other army lists, and there are a decent amount of vehicles, so the real reason is probably for the Holy Order trait, and the ability of the Engine Seer is just a side benefit. Otherwise, this list would not be able to include another Tech Priest if it wanted to make use of two different Skatari Marshals. There's something to be said about the Techno Archaeologist as well. If you had very large squads of different Skatari troops in order to allow them to fire as well as perform an action. However, that is not the case with this army list as when we look at our troop choices, we see that the first two troop choices are two squads of 10 Skatari Veteran Rangers armed with nothing but their Galvanic Rifles and a Data Tether in each of those squads. In addition to those two squads of Rangers, there are two squads of 10 Vanguard armed with once again nothing but their basic carbines and a data tether in each of those squads. As pointed out previously, this once again reinforces that Rangers and Vanguard see plenty of play together and it's not dominated by one or the other. However, the Rangers are a little more popular than the Vanguard at this time due to the changes within the different stratagems as well as the Rangers having a bit more firepower at a long range and the ability to put out more damage as a whole. Though the Vanguard should definitely not be discounted in any way as they still have a lot of potency and can do a lot of work within your various matches. Following the troop choices, we come to our elites, and once again we see a utilization of the infiltrators with a squad of 10 infiltrators armed with flechette pistols as well as taser goads in this situation. So as you can see, there's definitely a variety of what the infiltrators are equipped with. In this case, because they are a larger squad of infiltrators, they have been given an extra warlord trait, in this case being the Eyes of the Anasaya. This is definitely a trait that will help them get within close combat so that they can get the most out of their close combat potential. Following the infiltrators, we have a unit of 10 rust stalkers being armed with transonic blades and having an extra trait as well. This extra trait is archived engagements which does help out their ability within close combat once they reach it. A part of me would have liked to see the eyes of the Amasaya on the Rust Stalkers over archived engagements simply because the Rust Stalkers have no ability to do anything if they do not reach melee combat whereas the infiltrators can at least fire their pistols if they happen to not reach close combat when they make the charge. That being said, there is some justification of it the way it is now, as sometimes the infiltrators can fire their pistols and put themselves a little bit out of range by taking out the closest enemies to them within charge range and thus slightly failing a charge. That being said, if you're worried about making a charge, just don't shoot your pistols and wait until you're within close combat to fire your pistols within the next round. In any case, there are a lot of different ways of outfitting your infiltrators and rust stalkers, and I'll say this much, they don't have data tethers, so unless they're within 9 inches of other units that have these warlord traits, they're definitely on their own when it comes to carrying some of these different options. As such, this is why you'll oftentimes see a trait on one of these units or multiple units as a result of this because they need access to it directly and are oftentimes in their own little bubble when when it comes to what they're engaging with. After the lead choice, we come to our first fast attack choice, being the Iron Striders. In this case, all three of them armed with twin Cognus Last Cannons. 
And while this is the only list that we looked at that has Iron Striders, I will say this much, the Iron Striders are a lot more prevalent than the sample of three lists would lead you to believe as I like to choose a variety of different armies. And when looking at a multitude of lists, Iron Striders show up in different lists quite commonly, in many cases in multiple squads of three or multiple squads of one or some various configuration of different unit sizes. It's good to see that they still have plenty of play and that they have not been relegated due to the changes that occurred to them. That being said, the inability to access Exemplar's Eternity and other core benefits does hurt them a bit, however the cost and the firepower that they bring, as well as their general durability and mobility, does still make them one of the better units within the army, and there is absolutely no shortage of them within various army lists. And then in the second fast attack choice, there are 9 raiders. Once again, raiders are very good, very mobile, and very powerful units that make a good addition to almost any list that you're choosing to play. So far nothing we've seen has been particularly that exciting outside of potentially the Engine Seer who is a bit unique to this list, though other lists did include things like the Engine Seer or a Dominus here or there. Though what really makes this list interesting in my opinion is the third fast attack choice which is a unit of four Dragoons. These four Dragoons are armed with Radium Giselles. Obviously I'm joking and they're actually armed with four Taser Lances. This is very interesting as I think a lot of people counted their Dragoon out and, and as we can see here, a list including four Dragoons, which is a very substantial points investment, did place very highly within a very competitive event. There is something to be said about the mobility of the Dragoons as well as their general melee capabilities. And with this appearance I wouldn't count them out as a fluke as there's plenty of room for them to run and I definitely think they're a unit that warrants a lot more investigation than they're probably given at this time. Though even with that in mind, it's very nice to see them within play and I'm happy that they're seeing some love in comparison to their previous stance of being kind of put on the shelf until now. Finally, this list concludes with two more choices, the first being a heavy choice, which consists of a Scorpius Disintegrator armed with a Belarus Energy Cannon, once again a good choice that allows it to get around line of sight, and is a rather efficient weapon even with its strength decrease going into the 9th edition codex. Finally, the last choice is once again a flyer, which is a Fuselave. In this case, the Fuselave is armed with a Chaff Launcher, showing that there is a very good justification for using Chaff Launchers even outside of the first list that we saw today. In any case, I think this is an exciting list as it brings some interesting things to the table, such as those Sidonian Dragoons, as well as an engine here that we didn't quite see. And to wrap up this video, I'd like to make some comments about the various lists I saw and some of the trends I saw within the meta when looking at the various lists in order to find these three that stood out to me the most. One thing I'll say is that large blocks of Skitari are still very prevalent, the different flyers have definitely taken a main role within many army lists, and there are quite a few lists that make heavy utilization of things like Infiltrators, Rust Stalkers, and Taraxi, as well as Iron Striders to give themselves a lot of mobility and board presence as a whole. A few things that I didn't really see in any lists were Electro Priests, which have seemed to have pretty much fallen out of the meta completely, as well as Cataphrons as a whole. It's kind of strange considering Cataphrons had seen some success early on, especially with some Cataphron lists making top 4 that utilize Cataphrons very heavily, as opposed to Skitari. Though that doesn't mean Cataphrons aren't playable in the meta, it just means that we really haven't seen much of them at this time, and that's probably in part due to the Skitari Veteran Cohort, which is a very popular option. In addition to that, the Cataphron spam list is not very viable right now, though I do think at some point we'll see the return of some level of Cataphrons within lists, and they're definitely a unit that I really enjoy, so I'll continue playing them on my end. That being said, as all, we're seeing less Admech players, so that can contribute to some of the lack of variety with some of these more niche units that we've seen in the past. It does seem like the FAQ changes did bring the power level of the Admech in line, so it's a little bit wrong on that and thinking that they didn't go far enough previously. I will also mention that they are still making plenty of first place finishes as well as top 4 finishes as a whole, so they're definitely a force to be reckoned with, they're just not completely overpowered like they were before. And one final thing I'd like to mention before concluding this video is that the Dune Crawler and the Dominus do see some play still to this day, though that being said there were no lists that really featured the Dominus as a core role to the army, it was more of an alternative to Skatari Marshall or a Manipulus, and the lists that did feature Dune Crawlers were mostly middle of the pack so there wasn't anything particularly that made me excited excited about their function within the army. I'll continue looking at different army lists and as time goes on hopefully we'll see some of those Cataphron lists as well as lists featuring things like Dunecrawlers, Cerberus Raiders, and Electro Priests that we didn't really see in any of these lists. Once that happens I'll probably make a follow up video showcasing some of those options and at the very least I'll probably revisit the meta for the Admech within the next couple of months and see where they stand there and how those lists evolve. So this kind of video I really want to be an evolutionary video where we see how lists progress over time as opposed to a static one that takes a sample of lists and says this is how they'll 
always be because definitely the meta endless change as time goes on and it's very important to understand that this game evolves over a period of time due to other armies being released or getting updates as well as just people figuring out how to play things a little bit differently. As such there's a lot of room to innovate. I don't think we've gone to full optimization yet and there are plenty of other interesting things to cover that I'll be going over within future videos. And as always if you've enjoyed the content like and subscribe as it really does help the channel out and if you get the opportunity please do share the channel as that not only massively helps the channel but also helps the people who may discover it and benefit from the content. I would also like to give a quick shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome people. Thank you very much for supporting the channel and regardless if you're a patron or not thank you for watching and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.